hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Kristen and I make videos to encourage you, empower you to be more and not less, and most importantly, to have fun because life is meant to be enjoyed. Now today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do, but nonetheless still fits into what I'm trying to do with my channel. And for those of you who don't know, May is National Mental Health Awareness Month. And as someone who has struggled with mental health issues, as well as helped friends and family, and seen friends and family struggle with mental health issues as well, it is a topic that is super just big on my heart and something I'm super passionate about. Because that show that over 450 million people suffer with mental health disorders and I feel like it's even more prevalent in today's society that I posted earlier this week which I will link to this video was if you personally struggle with mental health five tips for helping you deal with your mental health and just kind of get through those struggles every single day today I want to make a video on how to help someone who you know is struggling with mental health. I hope at least these tips will give you a good place just from someone who's experienced it of how you can help someone who's experienced mental health struggles and help them just through the journey and through the process because it's kind of crazy and it's kind of messy. I do just want to say that like I am so thankful that you are someone who wants to help someone who is struggling with mental health. I think that is so big and we need more people in um, in everyone's lives who just want to help and just want to be there for that person. I also want to say just do not take it personally if someone is struggling to ask for help or pushing you away because of this like mental health is such a tricky subject and it's really like a hidden battle if someone broke their arm and they have a cast that's easy to see but mental disorders anxiety depression body image eating disorder OCD the list goes on and on it's like the hidden opponent in our brains and so don't take it personally and just continue to show up and do everything that you can um, because I know deep down that person really does appreciate it. And so if you enjoyed this video, for sure give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe so that you can check out more of my videos when I do upload them. And if you know someone who knows another person who is struggling with mental health, definitely share this video with them. And if you yourself are struggling with mental health issues and you wanna share this video, um, with someone that you're close to to help them understand and get a better idea of how they can help you, please go ahead and share that too. I just wanna spread this information out to as many people as possible and help as many people who are struggling with mental health issues and who are trying to help people who are struggling with mental health issues as possible. So let's jump in. First is ask that person how you can help and or what their triggers might be. First and foremost, this allows you to become aware and it opens the communication, which is the key. Because a lot of times people who are struggling with mental health disorders and issues, they don't ask for help. And whether that's because they fear rejection, they fear being judged or laughed at, don't know what to say, you just simply opening the communication and saying, I'm here to help, how can I help, is huge in letting that person know that they're not alone, that they don't have to go through this battle alone, and that they have someone on their side who is willing and able to help them. With that said, when you do ask them, do not get frustrated if they say that they don't need help or they don't know how you can help. They're not just trying to blow you off. Truly, they might not understand what they're going through themselves. This might be new and scary for them, and they truly don't know what would best help them in this situation. And of course, that's when professional help comes into play a lot of times, but just don't get frustrated if they do say those things. Instead, just continue to let them know that you are there for them. Continue to encourage them and continue to just ask them, you know, every so often, is there anything I can do to help? To kind of find that balance depending on your relationship with the person, what you know about them and things like that. Second thing, you can ask what their triggers are if they know their triggers. and. Triggers are a huge thing for people in recovery from all types of mental health disorders. And you might not even know how what you're doing or saying might be triggering for that person. And again, people who are dealing with mental health struggles struggle to open up and come front and say, hey, when you do this, when you say this, that actually kind of triggers me in this way. So by you just going forth first and opening that communication can be a huge help for them. It takes a lot of pressure off on when they are already putting a lot of pressure on themselves. So being aware of how you can help them and how what their triggers might be, whether it's you or some external stimuli, can honestly do the most beneficial for you and for them. Second is do not doubt them and do not question them. This is a huge 
thing. If someone broke an arm and the bone was sticking out of their arm, you and they said, I think I broke my arm, you wouldn't be like, mm, it doesn't look broken enough, or I really don't think so. You see the bone, you can see the injury. You can't see inside someone's mind to know the mental health issues that they are struggling with. So do not quickly off the bat judge them or doubt them or question them just simply because they don't fit the stereotype for that mental health disorder. Don't say things like you're exaggerating, you don't look sick enough, you don't show X symptom, it's all in your head. It doesn't make sense that you're dealing with this now or then because so many times people who are struggling mentally already put doubt in their heads that they aren't sick enough to reach out and ask for help or maybe that this is all in their head and it's not. And so they already have that doubt. Do not add to it. Do not add oil to the fire to make it bigger. They might feel alone in their struggles and if you doubt or question them, they might retreat even more and they might feel even more alone. And if they think they're being good by opening the communication and letting you know what they're going through, and then you doubt them, they're gonna to start to retreat and, and can actually lose progress. Simply, people who are struggling mentally, they just wanna know that someone is there for them and that someone is supporting them. And doubting and questioning are not actions that show that you support them. Instead, encourage them and help them any way you can in pursuing the solutions that they wanna pursue or receiving the help that they're already receiving, whether that be from doctors, um, therapists, psychiatrists, medication. Don't doubt or question any of those things. Leave it to the professionals. You are not a professional in this specific recovery or this specific mental health disorder. So let the professionals diagnose. You just be there to support them. Don't question or doubt where they are or where they're going. Honestly, they just need someone who's going to support them because they are facing a scary, scary journey ahead of them and they're already doubting and questioning themselves. So do not be an extra source of that. Third, is don't expect answers and don't try to find them. It's kind of the same thing with doubting. If, if you're asking how can you help, if you're asking what's going on or why is this happening and they don't know or they say they don't know, do not question, do not probe, do not try and find your own answers, just leave it be. Because most of the time, people who are struggling with mental health disorders truly don't know and may not fully understand what they're going through and they might not know how to say it and speak it and they probably don't have the answers, that's why they're struggling. If they had the answers for why they're struggling and what they can do to fix it, they would probably be doing it. So if they say, I don't know, or there is no logical explanation, like just leave it be. Because sometimes we truly don't know what we're going through and we just want support. We don't want someone who's trying to find the answers and fix us, we just want someone to say, hey, I see where you are right now, I'm here for you and we're gonna figure this out together by reaching out and getting help. Because if you are not a licensed professional in these areas, you can actually do more harm than good by trying to figure out the answers to come up with answers that might not actually be what's going on in that situation because you don't have the experience and the knowledge behind it. The answers or reasons why also adds a ton of pressure to that person who is struggling. And let me tell you, like when we are struggling with mental health disorder and mental health issues, we are already putting a lot of pressure on ourselves to fix ourselves and make ourselves different and not experience what we are. And so by you trying to find answers um, or expect answers from us, that's just gonna add even more pressure and do probably more harm to our mental health. Of course, be open and actually listen to them if they come forth with, hey, I, I think this might be why it's happening. I think this is what's causing it. Be open to listening, but at the same time, just realize that that might not happen a lot because a lot of the recovery process for any mental health struggle is a lot of introspective and wrestling with thoughts and looking to our thought patterns and our behaviors and why we do what we do. Honestly, not making sense right now or even ever. So like just let go of the need to have an answer right now or even have an answer ever and just realize that, hey, like no matter what, I'm just gonna be here for you and I'm not gonna expect answers from you or try and find them myself. Fourth is to research the topic. This can be especially helpful if the person you know who is struggling is not open to communicating and not very good at expressing themselves, what's going on, what they're struggling with, etc. Now, research does not mean go and try and find the answers. See my previous tip. Or taking what Soccer Mom 101 said worked for her son or her daughter. 
Research simply means wanting to educate yourself on the basic information about that mental health disorder so that you can better support and encourage your friend, family member, coworker, classmate, whoever that might be struggling on their journey. Of course, every single person is different. The same mental health disorder is not gonna affect two people the exact same way. How anxiety manifests in Bob is gonna be different than how anxiety manifests itself in Susan and not just gender differences. It's a lot of different factors, environment, biological things, past history, what's currently going on, etc. Doing research can help you have a basic understanding um, and general knowledge of it, of what's going on, things such as symptoms to look out for, possible solution paths, um, emotions or feelings that might be connected with it, and things like that. Again, not finding all of that so you can go back to the person and say, hey, I know how to fix you. It's just understanding kind of like the basic level so that you know where to go from there to help that specific person. Think of researching like the tip of an iceberg. When you see an iceberg and you just see the tip, you, but there's so much underneath that you don't know. And that's the same thing with mental health struggles. Like what you can research and find out the basic information is just the tip of the iceberg. And there's so much below and that is all specific to the individual person. And that you're not gonna be able to just research on. But if you understand the basic and that tip of the iceberg, you can be better suited and be in a better place to then help kind of navigate the rest of the iceberg that is specific to that individual person. And of course, when you are doing research, please, please, please make sure it is a credible source that is a licensed and educated professional. Now, yes, I know some of the like, blogs and chat rooms and things, it might have some people who went through some of the same stuff that you're going through and trying to help someone. Like That's great to realize that you're not alone and just kind of gauge experiences, but please just take your information from credible licensed professionals and sources um, that aren't just personal experiences because like I said, every single person's experience is going to be different. And so to get the best understanding and knowledge of basic information, you're gonna to wanna to go to those credible sources. And last but not least is to continue to support them and show up for them. And the biggest thing here is just to be patient. Recovery takes time and every single person's journey is going to be unique. It's going to look different. It's going to take a different amount of time. Um, but no matter what, results and changes and growth isn't gonna happen just like that. So just be patient with yourself and with that person. Understand that you're both human, so neither of you are perfect. You need to give both yourself and the other person grace. Don't expect yourself to be perfect, but as best as you can, continue to show them that you are there to help and then actually show up. They say, yeah, actually I could really use someone to talk to. And you go, well, I'm busy. You know, Maybe you can go call your other friend or something. Like, They're gonna be like, what the heck? You just asked how you could help and now you're not showing up. So as best as you can, be true to your word and continue to support them. It may be feeling like you're hitting a brick wall just over and over and over again, not getting it through to them. But I promise you're actually making small dents and small cracks. Eventually the wall is going to come down and that person's gonna be much more open to communicating. And, but just don't get frustrated feeling like you're hitting that wall just because they don't want your help or they won't talk to you as much as you'd like them to or they're not seeing as much progress as you think they should. Just keep showing up, keep supporting, keep encouraging them because I promise you it's doing a lot of good. Um, even if they're not showing it, like internally, they just feel so grateful for that. Even if they continue to refuse help, even if they continue to push you away, do not pull away. Now I'm not giving that person who is struggling, you know, permission to be an inconsiderate female dog, but I will say mental health struggles, they can just like take over our emotions and the way we think and we act and we say things that we don't mean. And again, I'm not like giving that as an excuse. I'm just letting you know, like, even if someone says they don't want help, they might not mean it. They're just trying to be tough or they're just trying to like push people away because they don't want to drag people into this, but they may actually want help. And so, you know, maybe the first three times you ask them, they keep refusing, but the fourth or the fifth or the sixth time that you ask, you might break through to them and have them open up and say, this is how you can help me. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what... I feel like I am right now. And so just continue to be patient and continue to show up. And of course, consider your own health, physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally in this situation. Um, if you, you continuing to show up is really not good for either of y'all's health, maybe you do need to take a step back. That's a decision that you have to make. But even then, continue to encourage and support them just from afar. And maybe that's for forever, maybe that's only for a short time period, I don't know. 
Um, but definitely take your health into consideration and take a step back if you need, but don't allow that step back for you to completely stop supporting them. Because truly knowing that people are continuously supporting and wanting to help us through our mental health struggles can be a huge encouragement um, to seek help, to continue going to therapy, to continue working through our recovery journey and moving forward and battling through tough days. So just continue to show up and support them as best as you can. Even if you feel like you're not getting anywhere or seeing progress, because I promise you like things are happening, it just may take some time. So those are my five tips. I truly, truly hope that at least one, if not more than one, helped you and gave you at least a reference, an idea, something that you can take away and take to that person um, that you know who is struggling. And like I said, I think it is so amazing that you are wanting to help this person, whether it's your classmate, your coworker, your friend, your family member, um, just maybe even like a stranger you see on the internet that you feel compelled to talk to. I think it's so amazing that you are watching this video because you want to help and that in itself is a huge step so don't take anything personally um, give yourself grace and realize that you are doing the best you can just like that person is doing the best they can and be there for them and just be yourself don't try to fake anything don't try to act like you have it all together either just knowing that someone is there is going to be a huge help to anyone who is struggling Again, just be patient because you don't know the extent that someone is struggling. So continue to open that communication. Continue to support and encourage them. Don't expect anything from them. Don't try to fix this all yourself, but just get them the help that they are willing to receive and that they need as continue to support and just like be there for them because I promise you that is so, so wonderful. So again, um, if you are struggling, I hope you can pass this along to someone um, who you love and care about, show them how they can help you. And if you know someone who's struggling, I hope this video helps you help them. Um, and most importantly, whoever you are, I hope you go knowing that you are worth more than you know, capable of more than you think, and loved more than you can imagine. Even when my light burns low, I could never lose my hope. I've been down this road before, now I know it's way to go. You can try to